Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part four of our deep dive into the TechDraw workbench in FreeCAD. Now in part three, I talked about multi-views and that video had hardly been up on YouTube for more than a couple of days and was technically already obsolete. Um, I run version 0.18, a pre-release version. Uh, 18 has not been officially released yet, although it is getting very close. And, uh, and I make these videos using that with the hope that they'll uh, be relevant for as long as possible. Uh, but in some cases, things are still getting fixed and corrected, uh, you know, very close to release. And in this case, some of the weirdness that uh, I showed with uh, subviews moving independent of the anchor view in a, in a uh, multi-view uh, has already been corrected and has been fixed. So if you're running 0.18, you won't see that particular uh, strangeness. If you're running 0.17, it's still there. Uh, but like I said, 18 is going to be out soon. Now in this video, we're going to talk about uh, section views and detail views, and uh, let's go ahead and jump on into it. So this is the part that we've been using throughout this uh, tutorial, and I modified the part slightly by adding a uh, counter bores here on the back uh, you know you, you could imagine the being counter boards so that the heads of the bolts are recessed back in and that would be a feature that's difficult to show in uh, in a regular view uh, or a multi view like this where you're looking down from the top or, or from the side because the feature is hidden inside the uh, uh, the body of our of our part now I could add a a, a bottom view to this uh, and, and you can see that I would get the, uh, you know, the outside of the shape, but that doesn't show me the depth of the counter bore. Uh, so what we need for something like that is, uh, is a section view. I could add something like a, uh, uh, an arch section plane to the shape, you know, which cuts through the feature. I could add that section plane as a view, and that would show us, uh, you know, a cross section through those, those counter bores. But I don't get any uh, points that I can link to to apply dimensions to those, so I can't show the depth or something like that. So I'm going to delete the arch view here, and, uh, and instead I'm going to do a section view, which is kind of a, a sub view of, of an existing one. So what, the way you do this is by selecting one of the existing views and then uh, using this uh, icon or button on the toolbar to apply a section view to it. So this opens up a task panel where we can configure our section. Now you can think of the section as though we took the part and we cut through it with a saw and then rotated it to look at the cut face. And if we were to cut through this on a saw, I could either be looking from the, this direction up at, at this part of it or from this direction down onto this part of it um, onto that that cut face and uh, uh, and likewise I could cut through the part vertically and look at it either from the left or the right and these four buttons control that uh, that selection they control which direction you're cutting through the part and then which direction you're looking at the cut from these three controls fine tune the position of that line. So if I don't want to come directly through the center of the bound box, uh, I can change the Y position so that I would cut, for instance, through the middle of, uh, of my counter bores, which is what I want. But while we're here, I want to talk a little bit about this, uh, uh, this dialog. Um, I, I love this feature, but uh, th th this task panel has some issues that are make it very confusing for a, particularly for a new user to understand what's going on. Um, when we initially come in here, you'll see that the, 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 the section is created, the section view is created, but there's nothing populated in it. And, um, and, and these values are preset. Well, it turns out that these values are coming from the center of the bound box in all three directions. Uh, but it's not clear what, you know, from looking at it why that would be the case, why they would be 20, negative 40, and 5. At this point, what can a user do? Well, you can click Cancel, uh, and you click OK, and you can click Reset, and enter some values, but it's not clear exactly what anything's going to do. So these are big colorful buttons, and if the user clicks on them, something happens. So one thing that happens is that the section gets populated, and the other three get turned off. But it's not clear why this got populated the way that it did because there's no indicator in the primary view of where that, that section line uh, falls. Now, 
I, I happen to know that if you click on these things again, then you get that line populated. Uh, and I think that's just a bug. What I would prefer to see is that when we come into the task panel, that immediately the line is created and placed on here. One of these is selected and the corresponding section is populated. So basically we create a section fully configured and then allow the user to refine that selection. These should allow the user to, I should be able to click on, on one at a time and, and deselect the other ones. And I can't do that. The only thing that I can do is I can re-click on this one and I can click on reset. Now, in this case, clicking on this, um, well, let me show you. If I, if I set my value to, say, negative 16, which I happen to know runs through the middle of my counter bore holes, when I click off the field, nothing is updated. And there's no way for me to apply those changes. There's, there's no apply button here. The only thing that I could do is hit reset, which would reset everything to the initial condition, or click on OK. But if the user has messed around with this a little bit, they realize that clicking on this again acts like an apply and resets those values or, or uh, updates the, the view to reflect the changes in, in the task panel. That's very non-intuitive. There should be an apply button here and these should not act like, uh, like an apply function. They should just purely set the, the uh, uh, direction uh, of, the, uh, of the view cut. And the next problem with the task panel is that uh, once I say OK and dismiss it, there's no way to come back in here again. The, uh, if I say OK and I double click back on the section view, there's nothing that I can do. Uh, the only thing I can do is adjust the properties uh, directly from the, the uh, property pane down below. And that's fine. I mean, everything is here, uh, but it's again, it's a little bit confusing. I would prefer that any time we use a task panel, that uh, and it creates something in in the tree double clicking on that thing in the tree restores the task panel and lets the user continue to do what they were doing before i think that's a more intuitive interface uh, um, especially for a new user learning the system okay back to our section views these views are not part of even though i selected this top view from a, a projection group the view that was created is not part of that group, and so it can have its own scale. So by default, my scale was a 0 0.5. If I set this to 2 and hit OK, even clicking off the field, nothing is updated. Uh, in this case, I actually have to recompute the document before my change takes effect. Um, that, too, is a little bit... Un unintuitive. I would prefer that unless it's going to be a, a heavy recompute cycle that the anytime we make a change to a property that those uh, those changes are reflected as soon as possible. Um, otherwise the user doesn't know whether the change didn't have an effect or whether the change is still pending some sort of an update. Um, but that, that said, uh, I really like the feature. I like the way that, uh, uh, that it works. Um, I just wish that the UI was a little bit smoother. Detail views are another way of uh, drawing attention to a particular feature in your model um, and, and also giving you the ability to zoom up uh, fairly tight on it. And they work the same way as, as section views. You uh, select a, a base view. In this case, I'm gonna make a detail view off of the section that we just did. So I'll select the section view, and then I'll add this, uh, add a detail view. And it adds two things to the drawing uh, at the same time. Well, one is this box around the, uh, the anchor point of the, uh, of the detail. And that it, it correlates to this uh, base property view, the x, y coordinates. And, and, um, and I can't drag this in, in here. The only way I can adjust it is, is with its, uh, um, oh, excuse me, that's the... Uh, it's the X, Y of the detail in the tree. So I have to change its, ah, I got that wrong too, didn't I? Ah, 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 yeah. It's the detail anchor point. Um, and it, it, I can adjust its properties here. And I have to click off of the field to uh, update it. The other thing that gets added is this detail view. So this is like a, a lens into the contents of this box. So at this point, that my by default, what I've got is a 
uh, a scale on my detail view that is uh, about half. I think it's, uh, where is my scale property here? Uh, that's one. So if I set my scale to three uh, and refresh my document, um, so that now I've got uh, a 3x view into the contents of, of this box. So let me move my um, anchor point. Uh, we'll move it over onto a little bit more. Okay, so now I got my anchor point centered over my counter bore, and so my detail view gives a zoom up of uh, 3x on that space. Uh, you also have this indicator on the corner, and that's similar to the uh, the symbols on our section view. Uh, that's adjustable; you can change it to anything that you want, and the corresponding. Uh, label on the detail view will reflect it. So we've got 99 here and detail 99 here. Now the, the detail views are also dimensionable as well. So I can select points within this and apply dimensions the same as I could to uh, any other kind of view. So in this case, uh, working with detail views pretty straightforward. It's, it's just a little bit uh, awkward, you know, that I can't, you know, I'd almost prefer to drag my anchor point to get that correctly positioned over my primary view. In this case, I can drag the, the detail view, but I can't dra drag the anchor point. Um, the, uh, uh, and likewise, I can change the XY coordinates and it updates in real time on the detail, but I can't change the, uh, if I roll the, the coordinates on the uh, on the anchor point, it doesn't update until I hit refresh on the document. So a little, little bit of roughness there. Section views give me a way to look at the internal structure of my part and focus on details in there and, and kind of ignore extraneous material. And detail views let me zoom up on a particular part of it and focus on that. But in this case, you know, what I'm trying to look at is, is the detail of this counter bore and all of this other material out here is sort of irrelevant to my purposes. Uh, it would be nice if I didn't have to chew up my uh, template space uh, on that uh, irrelevant information. And the way you do that is with uh, what's called a clip group. Uh, so the first thing you do is create a clip group and we'll insert it into the document and then you select the clip group and uh and a view that you want included and use this little green plus and it will insert the view into the clip group and uh um, and then I, you can do the same thing again repeating it with other sections so i'll add another view to that and now what i get is kind of a, a local coordinate system that wraps those two views and uh, so now I can I move them. They move as a, as a unit, and uh, everything outside the bounds of the clip group is just uh, clipped off. So I, I can now adjust the position of the views inside the clip group by opening it up and selecting one of these. And now you see that its coordinates are zero zero. I can uh, adjust its position. Um, let's see. We'll set its position down in the corner and uh, then my other one I'll set its position uh, up high like this and uh, over like that so now I've got a, uh, a single clip group that shows you know it's clipping off everything but it's showing my section view and then the detail of the section like that so that helps you uh, uh, kind of manage your real estate on your template and uh, uh, show only the information that you want to show. Um, that's about all I got to say about that. All right, there you have it. Sections and details in TechDraw. Uh, we're going to do one more video where we cover some uh, uh, details about configuring or customizing your own template. And uh, then we'll be wrapped up with the TechDraw series. Uh, as always, if you got comments or anything, sure, I'd like to see them down below. Uh, if I got anything wrong in, uh, in how TechDraw is used or, uh, or configured, please let me know that too. And, uh, and if you like this sort of stuff, you want to see more of this, please uh, subscribe or let me know, and uh, we'll give it a try.
Thanks.